<laughs> Hi, thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Martin Stenberg. I'm from Henning Larsen Architects. And I'm going to present this project to you. It's an experience center for Volvo that we are, have been working with since 2018 uh, in Gothenburg in Sweden. Uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, we started this, it was an interview competition in 2018 where we were selected as the architect. Uh, and it was really about a journey for Volvo as well. It's a, it's a company, it's two companies. It's a car company which was sold off in the 90s to a Chinese uh, company who now owns them. And then it's the AB Volvo also who co-owned the brand of Volvo uh, together, which wanted to do this building, which should have so showcased them and what they want to do in the future with mobility and the sort of the future of, of transportation industry. And then we worked a lot with them as architects. That was sort of a new thing for us to work with a brand in such a deep way and deep understanding of what they wanted to go with and, and sort of their future perspective of what they wanted to transition into. Uh, so this, instead of being a sort of a traditional museum for vehicles, it was going to be much more of a sort of a, an expression of what their f future view of society and, and their relationship to society would be about. Uh, and we came up with this, it, uh, that we move you or Volvo moves you, the people uh, that came from sort of an understanding of, of Swedish culture and what built Sweden and that Volvo has sort of been a part of that, the, the sort of bringing people and giving people access to a vast country with different types of nature and so on was a huge part of the inspiration and the source for this project. And we wanted to create sort of a, a journey through that project, uh, that the project was a journey for people to experience both Volvo and the society of Sweden and so on, and what we wanted to do with this project. Uh, we started early on, before we started to draw anything, uh, to work with Volvo about creating a vision for this project, what that would be, and what they wanted to do, and the impact they wanted to do with this project. And it was about, of course, creating a landmark, being something, doing something in the center of Gothenburg, the first time they did that. Uh, it was about creating a meeting place or gather people, which is a big part of their focus. Uh, premiumness, what would that be in, in architecture, I'll come to that. Uh, and then sustainability, of course, that led us into making this as a mass timber project. One of the aspects, at least. Um, here's the site. You see on the north side of Gothenburg, there's all the factory areas and where they have been located. Both companies previously, there's a museum. They have here a more traditional sort of vehicle museum. And they wanted with this project to locate in the city center or in the sort of the other aspect, other part of, of Gothenburg, the more central part of Gothenburg, and be a part of the urban fabric. Uh, and as architects in Henning Larsen, we have we, we always work with different scales. Of course, we're mainly architects, but we work also with urbanism and sort of give the buildings more value in terms of looking at buildings in a larger context, of course, as well. And landscape, which was big, it became a big part of this building as well. Uh, and sort of the location led us into to bringing landscape and city and sort of that merge was a big part of the inspiration. Uh, when it comes to digital, digitalization, which is a big part of what we're talking about today, uh, we of course worked with a lot of different tools. And this was part of the tools that we worked with initially or very early on to study sort of and the location of how the building should work and the placement of the building. It's about microclimate, looking at what could be potentially good outdoor areas for people to hang out in. Uh, it's about paths and circulation on the site and connection to the rest of the conditions around it. Uh, a lot of noise, uh, it's just about uh, up to a freeway. So there was a lot of these sort of studies that we did uh, with the, the engineers in our team. Let's see if I can get it too. Uh, and of course collect and, and, and sort of uh, data analyze that could then lead us into sort of coming into the more design wise the questions that, that it's about. Uh, we always as architects work uh, sort of in, in a holistic um, you know uh, um, 
approach when it comes to technology and data collection, uh, sustainability as an overall objective, of course, with everything we do. And, and we try always to strive for the best type of design. Um, going into the project, uh, when it comes to the landmark thing, uh, of course, it's it sort of also relating to the brand. It needed to be round. Uh, the location also seemed like that was the right choice. We have a lot of different um, uh, sort of surroundings. We have a freeway on one side, a river on the other side. So there's a lot of sort of reasons why we did it round as well. Um, here you see the section. There's a, we did. There was also another client which was a big part of. This is not a wooden project, unfortunately, but it's actually for another client. It's a big parking garage for the amusement park, which is beside it. But we tried to sort of use that and, and make that into a landscape uh, and dig down those parkings into a landscape, which was able then for the wooden part of the World of Volvo project to come up and be visible towards the freeway and create a sort of a pedestrian zone towards the river. Uh, conceptually, we wanted to also sort of take that piece of Sweden as a landscape, uh, a natural habitat for, for strengthening also the biodiversity in the area, as well as sort of the, the, the cultural thing of building in wood and strengthening that in, in, in Sweden as well. Uh, when it comes to, to, the, to the path of going from that, that idea to the actual built, it's of course a super complex, I think Stefan is going to come into the more manufacturing part of this after me, uh, <clears throat> but it's of course a very complex uh, wooden structure that we created and it was really derived from that initial thoughts about sort of a journey through a project and, and, and to that vision of, okay, what is that, that the big landscape with that pavilion, the wooden pavilion sitting in it, uh, and the experience of how you, or what you experience within that, both within the wooden structure, but also on that landscape. Um, so it was really about uh, a lot of digital craftsmanship when it comes to, we work with, with, uh, with uh, Grasshopper and Rhino mostly as the tools for this and developing both sort of the you see here the geometry how it derives from a sort of a perfect triangle and those circles came come out of a, of a wish from the client to have more some of the uh, exhibition functions as a black box function where you don't have daylight and so on so those boxes were then shaped according to the client's demand of the sizes of those functions and then sort of the structure derived from that that uh, those circles and the shape of those and the demand from the client. Uh, of course, it's a complex geometry where we worked very closely when VHAG was selected as the, together with Linna that did the project management of, of their part, uh, when they were selected as the structural engineer plus the manufacturer of the, of the wood structure, we worked closely with them in figuring out the dimensions of these ones. These are the main the most massive ones, they are 1.2 meters high, 1.8 meters high and 600 millimeters wide. So it's huge mass, massive uh, beams that spans. The longest, longest spans are probably here. It's 55, 60 meters without support. Um, and of course, it's, it's sort of when you come, when you can create these mathematical scripts, it's easy to also uh, look at it and work with the engineers and sort of uh, slide the amount of, of beams and, and structure you need for the support and, and very easily test out different what that does with the architecture and what that does with the room inside and sort of find the correct balance. Up to when we go and see the final prototypes with this my colleague Philip here who, who fell in love at sight when we saw the first prototypes of these massive uh, beams and the connectors. Uh, this is from the build site. It's a, like a year ago, I think. So it's, I think Stefan has more updated pictures of the build site. Um, but it was, it's been a fantastic process to see this from those early sketches and seeing that how that structure comes alive and creates rooms um, underneath it. Programming wise, just shortly before my time is out, 
it's a, it's a huge program for Volvo. They wanted to have, you see, vehicle handover where customers can come up and come and pick up both a truck, a bus, and a car. Uh, it was a big exhibition, of course. That's the main focus with the building, but it's also a lot of events and event halls and, and conference facilities and all kinds of, of those meeting facilities that supports both them and their sort of outreach to society and, 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 and the community around it. Uh, this is how it's going to be looking towards that pedestrian zone, the riverfront. And then how it sort of comes up and creates this big podium for the exhibition towards the freeway. And then there is this hidden gem, a gem on the top, which is a pavilion uh, with a nice uh, restaurant uh, and some meeting facilities and also some smaller exhibition spaces up here on the roof, which is that sort of hidden pavilion, which you need to experience through walking into the wood structure and coming up in the sort of going through the tree trunks up in the tree canopy. Some visuals from, from that. I think this is my last slide. Thanks.